Hey everyone. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so you guys always know whenever I do a live that I am trying to pull it together. So let me just make sure I got my whole setup. Let me get on Instagram and tell everyone that I'm live right now. Hey there. Can you see me good? I feel like I need to pull my blinds back more so you guys can see me. Hi there. Yay. People are watching. Hey there. Hey, Sydney. Hey, girly. Um, do I need to give you guys more light? Oh, thank you, Sandra. Um, it looks like a little dark on my end, but I don't know if that's just me. Could you use a little, hold on, let me try and get my ass. Oh boy. Hi there. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Nick, Tony. Hi, Tony. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. So I don't have to get up and struggle and go to the other side of the room. I just feel like I want it to be brighter. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay. Maybe that's just me being a stickler, being hella picky about aesthetic. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling really tempted to go open up my blinds. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, I'm good. Okay. 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. Sorry. It's just the, the, the picky person in me. Um, so what's up everyone? How is everyone Sunday so far? Um, matter of fact, let me make sure I go on Instagram and let people know. How's everyone Sunday? My Sunday is pretty good so far. So much happening. Like disgustingly so much happening. I can't even, I don't even know how I'm balancing it all. I'm really hoping you guys are like, damn, Lolo isn't posting as much as she used to or anything like that. Like I really hope you guys are being patient with me. <laughs> Please be patient. Um, ooh, I'm about to be on your TV. See, now that's going to make me want to get some more light because I got to make sure I look good on a TV screen. Um, oh, no. Why do you feel bad, Sydney? Um, but yes, no, honestly, you guys, I have so much going on i can't even i don't even know where to start like there's so much i'm preparing for there's so much that's just been happening a lot of these things i'm not even legally allowed to talk about <laughs> right now but i am um i just need you guys to know that i'm really working hard at like bringing taking sitting pretty up to a whole other level. Like once I'm able to get back to, now mind you, do not think, I don't want you to think in any way, shape or form that I am taking any kind of breaks from this shit. Like I am on it, but I am posting as much as I literally can. Because as some of you may know, all of you may know, I don't know, but I do work full time. So that takes up a lot of my time, plus preparation to record, plus um, still trying to balance everything with like some level of a personal life and all of these things and trying to um, just for certain things like when I'm out, like remembering to record because I'll be so caught up in the moment that I'm like, damn it, this would have been a great time to document this. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm just really at the point with Sitting Pretty where I just need help. I just need other people to help. So if you guys know people who edit videos and I'm an editor at heart, like that was my original um, 
you know, life goal was to be a video editor, but I just don't have time. So I'm just like, you know, I'm trying to get help with that. I'm trying to get help with captions. I'm trying to get help with, you know, some graphic design stuff. I'm trying to, you know, get my website going and I'm doing it all on my own right now. And so it really is difficult for me to balance all of the time. And I just really wanted to be sure that you guys didn't feel like, you know, I was bullshitting or I wasn't doing enough or anything like that. But, you know, doing this YouTube life is like a real thing, especially when you're taking it on as something bigger than just being like, oh, I just want to post a video and be cute on camera. Like, no, like this shit is very real for me. So, so yeah, so I just really wanted to get on live so you guys could hit me with all of the questions that you have anything that you maybe want some advice on that I may not have time to address in a specific video. Um, you know, anything you want to ask me personally, if there's, if there's anything along the natures of that, like I'm here, I'm an open book. I'm just ready for whatever, whatever you guys want right now because and honestly I may end up doing a lot more live videos just so I could be in consistent communication with you guys you know what I mean because I am here for you always 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 um so yeah so if there's anything that you're curious about what I got uh going on in my life personally professionally um, if there's anything going on in your lives, personally, professionally, you know, go ahead and, and ask away. This is the open forum. Y'all know me. Y'all know I do not mind. You know, I am here for you guys. So, okay, let me start scrolling up because I did see a couple of things. Um, uh, can you please tell me if your physical health issues impacted your mental health issues? I hope that is not too personal. Okay, so we will start with that. Um, my, has my physical health, um, impacted my mental health? So before I get started, let me make sure I post to, um, Instagram really quick only because this is a great question. And if there's people on Instagram waiting for me, um, I want to make sure that they're here for when I answer that amazing question. Yo, what's up you guys? I'm live on my YouTube right now. Okay, see, check it out. People are already chatting. I'm here. Oh no, it's it's loading, but I'm here. So you guys, come to my, okay, that didn't work. Damn it! Don't you hate, okay, is it just me or does Instagram sometimes, it's too sensitive with the, with the, what the fuck? What happened? What's going on? Okay, sorry you guys. There's a lot going on technical, technical issues. Um, but let me get back to this Instagram really quickly. Uh, hold on. Why do I feel like... Yo, what's up, you guys? Okay, here we go. Okay. Sorry, you guys. Please be patient. Okay, here I go. What is up, you guys? I am here. I'm live on my YouTube. Check it out. People are chatting. I'm right here. You see what I'm saying? So come join my YouTube right now. I'm live answering questions, come in, ask your questions, and let's get this shit popping. Okay, you guys. So, let's see. This is going to be echoing in the background. Are you guys able to see me good? Is it like, is it like echoing in some kind of, or stalling in some kind of weird way? Um, so, yeah. So, has my physical health impacted my mental health. Um, you know what? It's impacted it in different ways, right? So I have feel like because of my physical issues, it's impacted my mental health to become more positive. Um, um, it has helped me become more positive in an awkward kind of way. But then at times where um, I get down, I feel like it does, but I can't honestly say that it's impacted it in a 
negative way or it makes me more um and i hate to use the word depressed loosely because depression is a real mental health um issue so um i don't want to use it loosely like that but you know at times when i am feeling down about my health yes it does impact me mentally because i think that's just how it goes sometimes um, so, so yeah, I mean, the way that I try to combat the negative or the not so good feelings, um, is literally being mindful that I'm in a space where I know I'm negatively talking to myself and being like, okay, Lolo, you're negatively talking to yourself. Stop it. Take a break, breathe. Think about what you're saying, okay? Think about what you're saying and then flip it, you know? Um, I went through a really, really tough emotional break a few weeks ago because I was just under so much stress and this one situation with this dude um, kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. And it really, like, I had cried so hard, like my eyelids were swollen. I couldn't even go into work the next day. Like, it was pretty bad. Um, and it took me a while to get out of it because it really, um, it really fucked me up. Honestly, it fucked me up pretty bad. But, you know, I had to just get back focused, realize why I was feeling so down, recognize that I was down and then figuring out ways to mentally tell myself like I'm okay you'll be all right you know it's not your fault this is not your problem your life is going in a different direction this person clearly wasn't meant to come with you on this journey you know blah 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 blah, blah. so um so yeah yeah that, that was that was that was a very real time recently. And uh, yeah, I feel much better now. So thank you for the question. Um, yes, keep the questions going, y'all. Please, please. Um, okay, I see the connection is awesome. Great. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Just the other day, I downloaded a new browser called Brave. It stopped all the ads and commercials on YouTube. I hope people don't start pulling out of this what do you mean i mean here's the thing as annoying as ads and commercials are um on youtube you know those ads and commercials support my ability to uh build a certain lifestyle so that way i can start creating more content for you guys and take things up a notch so i know that they're annoying but you know not skipping the ads watching the commercials helps me to help you which is great i mean i'm gonna help you guys regardless nonetheless it's always good to know that there's other forms of support out there. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. So I hope people don't start using that browser because that would just kind of suck. <laughs> um, okay. So what do you suggest when dating? And it seems as though men just want sex because I'm ready to give up on dating seriously. Zana girl. Girl, you done brought up one of my favorite topics in life and you know this. Um, Ooh, how, why, how, what do you suggest when dating? You know what? I have a lot of suggestions when it comes to dating. One is the number one suggestion always is know what you want out of the dating process first. Be very, very clear. Not, oh, I'm just going to see where things go. Or, Deep down inside, I want a relationship, but I don't know if other people want relationships. So I'm just going to like be cool until I hope I find someone who wants a relationship and then we're going to build a relationship. No, hell no. Don't do it. You're setting yourself up for failure. Fuck that. You have to be very, very 
very clear about what you want first before you start dating. Be very clear. So if you want a relationship, sit in that relationship. I mean, sit in that decision and say, yes, I want a relationship. And anybody who don't want a relationship, I will not entertain. Period. Period. Okay, y'all? Like, I'm not bullshitting you. Because when you start dating and you realize or come across anyone that seems like all they want is sex, then you'll know like, okay, well, clearly all you want is sex. And that's fine. You could want sex all day long. Hell, I want sex too, but I want a relationship before I engage in the sex. So given that you don't want that, cool. Thank you, sir. I had a great time. Thank you for the meal. The drinks were amazing, but uh, deuces, we don't need to talk anymore. And that's it. Um, so be very clear about your intentions before dating that super duper helps then when you come across because i get caught up in it you come across somebody who seems really cool who's really nice and giving you the attention that you like not everything about them you know is maybe ideal but you're kind of like oh i can look past that no you won't be able to look past it because that very thing that you are trying to look past is going to be the very thing that ultimately destroys the connection that you have with that person. So not saying to look for perfection because perfection does not exist. So that's another tip. Do not expect perfection. What I will say is that certain things that you know you will not tolerate or that um, aren't things that are Pay attention to character traits, ultimately, is what I'm basically about to say. It's one thing to be like, oh, he's really nice, but he can't dress. Well, you know, being able to dress is just something somebody has to be taught. It's no big deal. You know, you that's something that can be worked on. A character trait is more so like, he's really nice, but he doesn't treat people in restaurants with much respect. That's a character trait because something like that shows a bit of ego. That's like, you feel like you're better than somebody because maybe you don't work at a restaurant, but they do. So you don't show them respect because you don't think it's a reputable job. See that that's an issue. That's a problem. So just beware of character traits versus, you know, just, minor habits that can be worked on. So those are all of my tips. Um, as a fellow wheelchair user, how do you stay active, like exercising and whatnot? Okay, so here's the thing about me. My particular disability is, um, it affects my muscle strength and my muscle mass. So I have been instructed to not do much physical activity. So I don't really exercise in the sense of like doing yoga or going to the gym or anything of that nature. If I do do exercises, mine are more like stretches, like I stretch or, um, you know, I move around. I do still have the ability to walk and stand, oh, excuse me, a little bit. So I'll like walk around my room or I'll pace back and forth just to, you know, get uh, blood flow going, blood circulation going, that kind of thing. So that's how I stay active. Regarding ads, should we click on the link or watch them through? What helps you more? Watch them through. When you see the ads, you guys, watch them through. That helps me more. Um, and then in certain cases, if you do click on the ad, don't skip it, but you click on the ad to just open up a new window, that helps me as well. So... That's all I'm going to say about that, because as YouTubers, you know, we're, I guess technically we're not like, really. I don't know. I don't even want to say too much. But yes, either click on the ad and open up the window or watch it all the way through, pretty much. Um, I just downloaded it to try it out and didn't make it my default browser. Okay, cool. No, no problem, Wheelie. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you really are irritated by ads and commercials, hey, no big deal because you watching the video also helps me as well. Um, so yes, when you live, 
Oh, when you live with an overbearing mom, what do you do? That is a great question. And I actually do have on my list of uh, videos to do is um, a video addressing parents and family and how to, um, you know, encourage your disabled family member or friend. Because, yes, Virginia, that is very, very tough because luckily, you know, I was blessed with a mom who wasn't overbearing. Um, she now, don't get it twisted. My mama definitely do not play no games. She plays no games, okay? Um, but she, she at least gave me the opportunity to spread my wings be an adult, grow into being a woman and all of those things. So, um, so yeah, so it's tough with an overbearing mom. Um, but I guess I would say the first, what I would suggest is probably try to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your mom where you're really expressing to her whatever it is you feel like you want to accomplish as a person um and and just be honest be completely vulnerable and say you know hey mom i know you treat me this way because you're concerned and you might be even a little fearful of what the outside world you know may may think of me or do to me but please understand that you have raised a great child and I can do this on my own. I can handle it. And just always know that if there was anything I felt like was too much for me to handle, that I would come to you for your help. But mom, I need your support in me wanting to learn or do X, Y, and Z. And I would just love your support in that. And then see what she says. Now, if you have the type of mom who you feel like you can't talk to her because she ain't trying to hear shit you got to say, then I would probably suggest writing down a letter. Write her a note, write her a letter, expressing exactly how you feel. Leave it in a place where you know she's going to see it. And then, you know leave it at that and 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 hopefully she sits down with you and has a conversation with you and everything else you know because there's there's that fine line with parenting where i know and this is only because i've had this conversation with my mom from the perspective of hey mom what made you so comfortable letting me leave the house and move six hours away from you um, and let me become my own adult. Like, how did you get to that point? And my mom basically had said that, you know, she trusted herself as a parent that she raised a good child who would be me. Um, and it was a terrifying, terrifying decision for her, but she knew that if she didn't, that she would be hurting my life and my growth more than letting me just learn on my own and become my own person and my in my own woman. So um so yeah so there's that fine line between wanting to protect, knowing that we need assistance, but then also allowing us to to be our um our own people, you know? Um so yeah I really hope that that helped. What do you do to friend or family member keep saying that they hope that you get better or get cured when you know very much that that will probably not happen in your lifetime? Well, I think when people say that, Sydney, that um, their intentions are good, their heart is in the right place, and that, you know, they they want the best for you. I think where you had because I get approached about this all the time too. I think where maybe you can step in is confidently say, like, you know what? I know you're coming from a great place, but check this out. I'm happy exactly with where I'm at and who I am. And 
if it's in the cards for me to get cured or become better physically, you know, um, in spite of a disability, then great. But if not, I'm completely okay with that happening. I'm completely okay with that. So, you know, just, just encourage, instead of encouraging, you know, something where the probabilities are smaller, encourage me with exactly where I'm at right now. And encourage me in other ways, aside from thinking that me getting better or me getting cured is going to be the end all be all of my happiness. Because that's not the case. Because I'm happy exactly with where I'm at right now. So, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, thanks, Lolo. Could you tell us a little bit about having a disability in the workplace? How did your disability influence the kind of job you chose or did it at all? Great question, Catherine. Um, having a disability in the workplace, luckily at my job, it's, it's an office job. Um, so, you know, I'm in the office all the time. Um, but I'm so thankful and happy for my job. Like I love my job. Um, so my workplace environment is great. Um, anything, they're very supportive at my job too. So anything that they need that I need, um, I just go to my boss or, or, you know, someone in it or anyone in the office and say, Hey, you know, I can't reach this. Is there an accommodation? Like, for example, the microwave in our workplace is too high for me to reach. And so when I went to HR and said, Hey, you know, I'm going to start bringing food in, you know, but I can't reach the microwave. They bought a whole new microwave and put it in an area where I can reach. So it's like my personal microwave in the office and nobody else touches it except for me. So it's like really cool. And then they like, bring cups down, um, instead of being in the, in the top cupboard, there's like some bottom shelves. And so my cups go there. Nobody touches my cups because everybody knows like she, this is her stuff kind of thing. So I have like my own stuff in the office, which is awesome that everyone is super supportive of. Um, so I think it's just more so about communication in the workplace. If you ever need something, talk to HR, talk to people in IT and uh, get what you need. Um, as far as how did my disability influence the kind of job, my disability didn't influence the kind of job that I chose. Um, my job is within the entertainment industry, which is what I've always loved to do. So my disability honestly had nothing to do with that. I just was looking for a job in the field that I studied in in college and got my degree in and thankfully, an internship turned into a full-time position and I've been there for like four years now. So yeah. Um, from growing up and being around other people with disabilities, I don't think I know anybody whose parents were not so overbearing, especially among those who are born with the disability. Exactly. Exactly. Parents can be overbearing, but they're, but they are, you know, they mean well, they, they really, really do mean well. Um, so let's see, uh, my job in the other job. Not your YouTube career. Right, 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 right. Okay, I picked up on that, Catherine. Thanks. Um, though the males in my family love me, most of them had a relationship with my able-bodied brother rather than me. The only exceptions were my two grandfathers and one grandmother. Well, you know what? Sometimes that happens. I think a lot of times, you know, people, family, friends, strangers, a lot of times because they don't know how to approach us as people with disabilities, they subconsciously ignore or avoid us because they are the ones that are uncomfortable. So it really has nothing to do with you. It's their own issue of their own purity about how they feel like they would be able to respond to you and that kind of thing. So, you know, um, it sucks when people do that, you know, and I'm, I'm a big advocate of communication. So if it's something like, Hey, like, you know, I feel like you guys have avoided me or whatever the case is, like, is everything good? Like, are we good? Like, is there anything you want to talk about? And, you know, maybe they're like, Oh, well, you know, you know, we like to go to the bar, man. And I just wasn't sure, 
if you know you could come with us and da, 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 da. and then you realize like oh bro like it's all good all you got to do is x y and z and then it turns now if they're assholes which there are a lot of people with family who has asshole family members you know they they might be like nah man we just ain't trying to you know we ain't trying to hang out with you bro like whatever fuck you whatever and it's like all right then motherfucker fuck you too you know what i mean so excuse my language um but yeah <laughs> I've definitely, you know, have experience where people were inconsiderate and stuff. Um, but yeah. Um, hi, when it comes to dating, do you think men, oh shit, where the question? Oh, do you think men are intimidated by asking a wheelchair user out? Do you ask men out or do you wait for them to make the first move? Truly, oh yeah. Um, Truly, this is a great question. So funny because I have this conversation with my homegirls all the time. Um, but do you think men are intimidated by asking a wheelchair user out? Yes, I do think a majority of men are intimidated. One, because most of the time they don't have the language or the understanding of um, how to ask. They think they put it in their minds that it has to be bigger and grander than asking the average woman out. And that's probably because subconsciously they don't have any real intention with you. So they don't know, see, they could go to an able, they feel more comfortable, which isn't even right. It doesn't matter, able-bodied or not, it's still not right. But I think society-wise, they feel more comfortable approaching an able-bodied woman and saying, and fucking ruining her life because they can do that. They have no real ill intention. They're about to run games and all these things on her. So they feel more comfortable doing that with her than they would somebody in a wheelchair. So to a degree, it's pretty cool being a woman or a male in a wheelchair when it comes to dating because you just weed out a lot of people, but you still come across people who ain't shit, which I've come across plenty of times um so i do think that they are intimidated um so there's that uh do you ask men out or do you wait for them to make the first move for me personally i am an extroverted person so i don't mind being the first person to ask but i think it just depends for me i'm, I'm i do go along with the flow with regards to just um, the type of relationship that's being built. And if I feel comfortable enough to be like, hey, you know what? I'm going out this weekend. Would you like to join me? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, or if I want to see if he's super duper interested that, um, yeah, maybe I might wait. It, it, it just depends. Sometimes I do like to sometimes make the first move to let the guy know that it's okay to ask me out because i think a lot of times maybe maybe and i could be assuming that guys want to ask us out but they're not sure where to take us so ultimately they just don't take us anywhere and then and so for me sometimes i like to make the first move just so that they can feel comfortable and knowing that i'm comfortable doing x y and z so I hope that helps. Um, this is the same. Things were very different. Ableism was even worse than it is now. Oh, I believe it. I definitely believe that. Um, let me see. This is a question more about intersectionality. Have you faced more discrimination as a disabled woman or as a woman of color, black woman? Um, great question, Catherine. I've honestly faced more discrimination as a disabled woman than I have as a black woman. Um, I, I can literally remember the times that I've been rejected um, going to certain clubs out here in LA when I was much younger um, because it was my wheelchair. Cause there was no other reason, no other reason. And, literally no other reason that they rejected me from going inside. There was no other reason. There was no other reason. So I definitely experienced that as a black woman. I haven't felt 
I haven't noticed any overt discrimination or even subtle discrimination. Um, so yeah, so that's why I would say uh, I've faced more discrimination as a disabled woman than as a black woman, for sure. Now, then again, I live in California. If I were to be living somewhere in the Midwest or the South, maybe I would have had different experiences. So um, as of now, uh, disability for sure. How do you combat ableism in the society that we live in today? Do you call out, do you call out on their bullshit? Um, great question. Here's the thing about ableism that is interesting to me. I think with a, ooh, excuse me, Lord have mercy, I'm burping. Um, ableism in the society today is such a subconscious reaction. It's such a subconscious doing on able-bodied people's part that they don't even realize what the fuck that they're doing. They don't even realize what they're saying or how they're saying it. So I try not to immediately get offended or judge anyone for ableist comments or ableist actions um, because unfortunately they're not even aware or cognizant of what they're doing. So when I come across situations where people will do things like if I'm in line to, I don't know, buy something or, or eat or whatever, and someone like steps directly in front of me as if I wasn't there, I call that bullshit out immediately. Like I'm immediately, hey, excuse me, I am a person, I'm in line. Think, and then it's like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I wasn't even thinking I wasn't. It's fine. Just pay more, pay closer attention next time. I've definitely done that plenty of times. If I'm at a store and I'm trying to uh, try something on and they've put an able-bodied person, you know, and the disabled room is used, I ask, I say, hey, you know, is the person in that room, um, you know, have they stated that they have a disability? And if they're like, oh no, you know, it's just really packed right now. Da, 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 da. Okay, well, when the next other room is open, I need you to ask them to leave that room and go in this room, please, because that room is supposed to be designated for me. So, and some people are compliant, some people aren't. And then they claim like, oh, well, the manager said blah, 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 blah. And then you bring in the manager and it turns to this big old deal, whatever. It's annoying, but, you know, you you have to do it. Um, so and even if I catch somebody, you know, personally who says something or does something, I definitely call them out because it's like, if I know you personally, it's like, bro, you're not even paying attention right now. Like, cut that shit out. So, yeah. Um. Not everyone who has a disability has a visible disability. Exactly. So that's why I try even for myself. Sometimes I have to catch myself because sometimes I'll be like, oh, that person. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't know that. I don't know that. So let me stop myself and be aware of what I'm saying and what I'm doing as well. So it's a very, very tricky thing when it comes to disability because it's not always visible and we have to be mindful as a community of those people as well that we, 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 can't, we can't make assumptions about people. But try your best to um, just be aware, not be so quick to respond um, harshly, but just know that um that you know we're all out here trying to figure this thing called life out you know we're all out here trying to figure it out and um and yeah you know we're, we're all just learning uh let's see i get so irritated that one of the first questions i'm asked is am i able to have sex yeah i mean that's annoying as fuck because it's just like yo bro like put your dick away calm down like uh you're like so annoying like chill bro freaking 
chill. Like it's, uh, yes, it is annoying because it's just like, what does it matter to you? Because at the end of the day, it's like, if I don't give you none, you ain't going to get it whether I know how to use it or not. So it's, it's a question that's so stupid and null and void. And don't be asking me those kinds of questions until we built up a rapport to where it would make sense for you to have to ask that question. Don't be asking me that question after the third time that we've talked. You know what I mean? Like, it takes some time. Okay, so cut it out. Like, ugh, you're so annoying. So anyways, yes. No, I feel you, Donna, because that is annoying. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Where are we at? I'm sorry. I lose. Um, are you active in any disability advocacy or activist groups? Great question. So I am... I like to consider Sitting Pretty to be a platform for advocacy. So that's one. Um, two, I, that's so crazy that you asked. I am actually starting to get involved and work with one of the chapters of the MDA out here in Southern California. So I'm really, really excited to start working with them. Um, so there's that. Um, I like to consider the group Curatable, which was founded by my mentor, disability fashion stylist, Stephanie Thomas, as a form of disability advocacy as well. Um, so yes, I'm definitely involved in groups and I definitely have relationships with like diverse ability. They've been really great over there. Um, you know, there is the Instagram page called Sit and Slay, that they're always super supportive of my stuff. So I feel like advocacy comes in so many different forms. That advocacy isn't necessarily always about getting a picket fence, going uh, a picket sign, going outside in front of the state office and screaming and yelling. You know, that's one form of advocacy, which is super um, honorable and courageous way of advocacy that is definitely one way another way is through you know talking online talking to people online another way is contacting your local government officials about whatever laws or things that need to be changed or or worked with so um i'm definitely building that area of sitting pretty and just me as Lolo personally, really starting to get involved in that as well as time goes on. So that is another thing on the huge plate of things that have been going on in my life recently. Um, how about clerks and waiters who address our able-bodied friend or family member about what they want and need? How do you respond? Um, the way I respond to that is by just saying, like, if I could tell that they're looking at them to and not looking at me i'd be like yes yeah, so i would also like the chicken alfredo uh with extra sauce please thank you and matter of fact bring me along island as well thank you so much so yeah that's how i do that at restaurants because i ain't got time um have you had a relationship where to go and, and was your, dis, oh, was, have you had a relationship in and was your disability blamed partly by the significant other? If so, how did you respond? Um, I've definitely had relationships in. Was my disability blamed? No. So unfortunately, I haven't had that experience. Um, nobody that I ever broken up with said, you know what? It's because you're disabled. I just can't handle this shit no more. I love you. You're great. But, you know, I can't do it no more. That has never happened. Not overtly. Now, do I believe, maybe somewhere deep down inside in my little box of insecurities, that my disability played a part in a guy not wanting to go past a certain step or whatever. Yeah, I do, unfortunately. And I don't know if that's just the insecurity that I convince myself or if there is validity in that. But sometimes I do feel like it. And that is one of my biggest, biggest challenges that I try to work through um, every day. 
honestly. It's something I, I try to to not let bother me, but you know, sometimes it gets to me. So yes, I'm so late to this. Oh, don't worry, Kate. Don't worry, girl. We here. We here. Okay. I'm just answering questions. We have a conversation. It is all good, girl. I'm hoping you are enjoying. Um, I noticed that there are so many resources for children with disabilities and elderly people. My hair is falling out trying to find resources for a power chair as an adult. It's such a struggle. Yes, it is, cheese girl. Yes, it is. And that is one of the things that I will be working on with the MDA about is, it's like, everyone cares about the babies. Everybody cares about the old folks. But us, that's in that in-between spot, where do we go? Where do we go? So yes, I completely, completely understand your frustration. Um, so, you know, as far as resources for a power chair as an adult, you know, my first thing that I come across or I can think of is reaching out to your local, I need some water. Where'd my little water bottle go? Oh, here it is. Um, reaching out to your local medical supply center, seeing if they have any resources, reaching out to your local um, SSI, IHSS um, office. I know they have a whole, they, matter of fact, out here, they just gave me a piece of paper with all of these hotline numbers. And I was like, where the fuck was this? When I was like 22 trying to figure this stuff out. Like, you know what I mean? So, and then again, maybe it didn't exist when I was 22. So yes. So reach out to those places for sure. How was your college experience? Is it Nana or Nana? Cause I, Nana, I'm going to just call you Nana girl. Um, my college experience was one of the best experiences of my entire life thus far um, as a whole. Like if I could think about a time period in my life, college was absolutely incredible. Um, hugely in part because one, I moved out of the house and it was the first time being on my own. And not just moved out of the house as in like up the street, like my mom was six hours away and I was just out here living my best life. So there was one. Two, I have the most amazing group of friends who I am still incredibly close to today. Like that is still my ride or dies today who uh, we just built a family. It was a whole bunch of us. We were all, none of us were from Southern California area, probably one or two, but a majority of us, you know, one of my boys is from uh, Texas, another one, uh, you know, a couple of friends, a lot of my friends were from the Bay Area, which is close to where I'm from. Um, you know, I had people from Mississippi, uh, people from the East Coast, Chicago, like we all became a family because none of us were from this area. And so we just all grew together. And it was literally the best time of my life. So I highly and highly, highly encourage that if you are of the age where you are about to enter college, go to college, not only for the education, but also for the life experience and all the things that it's going to teach you. College is so imperative to a person's growth. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's not a game. Um, some of the, of the invisible, Oh uh, shit, where am I at? Oh, I'm so behind. Our life threatening CP can't kill me, but diabetes or heart issues can. Yes, I said this is superior. Adapt is, is a great group. I've heard about Adapt. I've heard about Adapt. Yes. Okay. It drives me insane when people assume people with visible disabilities can't speak for themselves. Thankfully, I've only went this as one, but it's genuinely shot. Yes. Yes, it's so annoying. It is so annoying. So it was a young life, and it's for people with disabilities. I work with young adults. Awesome. I'm just here because she's been, ha, ah, you're sweet. Thank you, Swiss Snake. Um, it was, it was I didn't have to watch. So how's your day? Much love from LA. Hey, shout out to LA. Um, have you ever gone through a phase in life where you felt stuck? Like, I am rather unhappy at a university. However, I am also scared to go through the discomfort of change and potentially fail. Lily cat, boom. Let me tell you something. 
Um, yes, I have definitely felt stuck before. Um, I think that's a natural thing for all people to go through. Um, able-bodied, disabled, whatever. Um, everyone goes through that feeling of feeling stuck where you're scared to take a leap and go after what you know and your heart desires um, and fail at it or sticking to what you know is comfortable and always in the back of your mind feeling like, damn, if, if I would have just done X, Y, and Z. So yes, I understand that feeling. What I would encourage or suggest is that if there's something that is truly on your heart that you really, really want to do, and I'm talking like you really, really want to do this, not just, oh, that'd be cool to try that, but like you really, 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 really want to do something, do that shit. Do it. Who cares if you fail? Who cares? Everyone fails. With Will Smith encourages people to try and fail. He encourages people to do it. And we see where Will Smith is at. So <laughs> let's just be clear. But yes, who cares if you fail? Everyone fails. I failed plenty of times, multiple, multiple times on a personal level, on a professional level. And when you fail, it's not as scary as you think that it might be. That's the good, that's the part about failure that I've learned. It's like, I was so scared to do this. And then when I failed at it, I was like, and I looked back at it in hindsight, I was like, you know what? It wasn't that bad. Because the dope thing about failure is that you have no other choice but to keep going. So when you keep going and you look back and you're like, oh, I made it through that. Oh, but I'm going to for sure keep going and try these things and, and, and take risks here. Because if I made it through that, then I know I can make it through X, Y, and Z. So yes, go do whatever it is on your heart to do. Um, Let's see. What is a place that you would... Love to visit, but have not yet due to inaccessibility. For example, I would love to see the Misty Mountains in China. Um, girl, shout out to you, girl, because I ain't going to nobody's mountains. I am not the adventurous type in that way. Um, I, I am terrified of wildlife. <laughs> I can't do bugs. I don't do animals I ain't never seen before. Um, I am terrified. Uh, that's just my own personal preference. It has nothing to do with disability. I literally am just terrified. Um, but that's a great question. Honestly, um, I would love to go to so many places around the world. I don't know whether or not they're accessible. Um, so honestly, I haven't even explored it enough to really answer that correctly. But I could definitely tell you I would love to go to South Africa. That would just be amaze. Um, I want to go to Brazil. I would love to, you know, go to London. Um, Australia seems really dope. Would love to go to Japan. My one of my good friends, he's out in Bali, Indonesia right now. And I would love to go there. I want to go to Bora Bora. There's a lot of places I would love to go. Um, I just haven't researched enough because in my mind, I told myself, I said, I am not flying overseas until I can afford a first class ticket because I need to be 100% comfortable on them 16 hour, 20 hour flights because I ain't got time. How old am I? I am 30. I am the big three O and I will be the big three one in July. Um, yes, Bay Area, yay area, um, 25 in Burbank, shout out to Burbank, I know exactly where Burbank is at, I feel like I was just in Burbank not too long ago too, when was the last time, I went on a date in Burbank, so, oh, you know what, I went to Burbank for, um, what's the name, something egg, there's some restaurant that has something to do with an egg, and I went with my homegirl and her family for brunch. Yeah, that was a really dope spot. So go to that spot in Burbank. Um, hey, you guys. Hi, Living B. Um, I'm just encouraging everyone to ask questions. You see what I'm saying? Um, ask your questions. I'm getting close to having to uh, clock out of here, you guys. So start start throwing um, your question, your last minute questions now. Um, because I'm about to get off of here soon. Do you have a medical alert bracelet necklace? If so, where did you get it? I'm planning to get one myself. Yes. Okay. So it's not a bracelet or a necklace. I have a life alert that I keep in my purse and my daddy got it for me. 
Yes. And I'm talking about the classic I'm falling and I can't get up life alert. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, tiny chat was the shit, wasn't it? Um, and she's beautiful, has great content and cares for others. You end up with low. Oh, William, that's really sweet. Thank you. Um, while I have everyone here, please make sure you're following me on Instagram. I'm about to put it in the chat. Follow me on Instagram because sometimes I go live on Instagram too. Um, let's see. Um, may I send you a private message somewhere else? I'd like to ask you. Sure, you can email me. My email is here on my channel. It's on my Instagram. Here, I'll put it here. Email me. Lolo City. Gmail. Oops, gmail.com. Okay. Uh you pronounce it. Oh, so Nana. Okay. Al. Um, um, I love the independence and being in control. However, I'm not great at making friends, but I'm working keep working at it. Keep working at it. You know, I know it's scary and it's intimidating trying to make new friends as people with disabilities because we don't know if we can really trust them yet or anything like that. I would always say when it comes to that, follow your spirit and pay attention to their actions. That will always let you know if those people are really good friends of yours. Follow your spirit. If something in your energy is like, yeah, this person's nice, but something about them I'm not really feeling, start, start making your exit start departing immediately. Um, you know, if there's someone who really claims that they your friend and they rock with you, but say you need help getting a ride to a store or you need help with, you know, making your bed or whatever the case is, and they always got some excuse, they're not really trying to help you, mm -mm. make your depart, start departing and make your exit. So pay attention to your spirit and your actions when it comes to making new friends. What do you use for birth control? I've been told to avoid the pill because being non-ambulatory increases the risk of blood clots. Girl, let me tell you about birth control. You know what my birth control is? Um, not smashing. <laughs> Honestly, right now, I have been... She, she, is, she is not... She is not engaging, okay? She is not engaging right now. I am, <laughs> no ma'am. But when I was engaging and I was in relationships with folks, um, honestly, the only form of birth control I used was condoms and the pullout method. They didn't like it, but whatever. I was just like, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but yeah, honestly, I my, my only form of birth control is condoms. Um, Anyways, I just want to say I think you're so cool. Oh, thank you. And I love your dating videos. I'm struggling, but oh well. Girl, that's all right. We all struggling. Able body, not able, whatever. We are all struggling. Don't worry about it, girl. We are making it through. You know about where is the Ellen show is filmed there. Um, my knowledge of the US is very patchy. Don't worry about it, girl. Yes, Burbank is is really dope. A lot of things are shot in Burbank. A lot of things are shot in Burbank. I love you too, Virginia. Can we have a community message board on Facebook? There's a lot of actually message boards on Facebook um, um, for people with disabilities. I can't think of them right now, but I know I'm on a few of them. But yeah, um, how should you bring up your disability to someone you're talking to? I try to always put a picture of me in my wheelchair and my profile, but sometimes they don't see it. And I'm like, help. Girl, first off, you did the right thing. Have a picture of you in your wheelchair on your profile, that's one. Um, and two, once you know that that's the case, that should hopefully encourage you or um, give you the confidence to to just say it if you feel like they haven't, you know, if they're like, oh, so, um, you know, uh, I don't know what somebody would, would say if they didn't notice, but if you feel like maybe they didn't notice, you could just be like, uh, you did see the picture on my profile, right? You did notice that I'm in a chair. You know, make it funny so it's not awkward. So always make it funny, always uh, make it cool, 
you know, non-intimidating, those kinds of things. Um, you should look into getting a cable access TV show. Have you ever looked into doing more airtime? Um, I haven't looked into doing cable access TV. I think that that would be dope. That would be a lot of fun, but I, I haven't looked into it. And honestly, with where I'm at right now, YouTube is already tough enough. So to add another thing to it would be very, very difficult. Um, all right, last few questions. You've got 10 seconds. Um, let's see, random question. What's your favorite food? Mine is cheesecake. I love cheesecake. My favorite food is Mexican food. Anything Mexican food, I'm going to demolish it. No question. Um, great content. I enjoy. Thank you, Donna. I appreciate that. I want to go to meetings so I can meet others with disabilities in person, but I can only find meets for those with specific disabilities and none are what I have. Um, that's a great question. I honestly have no idea. That's so bad to say. I have no idea where there are um, support groups and meeting groups of people, other people with disabilities. I mean, I think the maybe the easiest way to start is just to Google, like, um, you know, meetups for people with cerebral palsy, meetups for people with, um, you know, muscular dystrophy, um, those kinds of things. And maybe those will help. Okay, last question, because my laptop is about to die. Um, have you been on a cruise yet? You would love it. Oh, girl, yes. I've been on a cruise three, probably like three, four times. I love cruises. I love, love cruises. They are so much fun. And yes, people with disabilities, we can go on cruises. They have resources for that. And they have resources um, for you to be able to rent a chair for the cruise ship. So that way you can have your independence on the ship. There are all those resources. So if you are interested in going on a cruise or going on any type of group style vacation, uh, Coachella, Essence Fest, which I'm going to both this year, um, whatever, just call the people. Hi, mommy. Love you. My mommy's in the chat, you guys. Um, yes. So if you're going to any of those group style um vacation spots just call the the organization who's throwing it ask and say hey i'm a person with a disability i need a wheelchair i need a walker i need yes power chairs they matter of fact my mom and i were going to essence fest this year and we're renting a power chair when we go on a cruise next year we're going to rent a power chair and the thing about it is the power chair will be waiting in your bunk on the ship. I have episodes called uh, Cruising Part 1 and Part 2 about my experience on a cruise and what I did uh, to prepare and what I did to make sure that we had a good time. So yes, it is all possible, ladies and gentlemen. Do not feel like you cannot go places. Just call, figure out what kind of resources they have, and uh, get your ass on the boat. See what I'm saying? Um, so yes, I can go on planes. Yes, I go on planes all the time. Um, that's another one. Uh, all you gotta do is call the airline. See, see what the process is to get on the plane. And it's super duper easy, super duper easy. Um, you know, I would always suggest flying with somebody. I can be stubborn, and my mom knows this, that I'm like, no, nah, mama, I got it, I can handle it. And then um, and a lot of times I do fly by myself, but there have been times where I've flown with somebody else and like the flight gets delayed or the flight gets canceled. And then I think to myself like, oh, okay, this is why I should fly with somebody, but I've definitely flown by myself before. So it's up to you. It's completely up to you. Um, that's so dope, Taylor. That is so dope. Keep doing dope shit like that. Cause that, that's awesome. So yes, my computer is on 7%, which means it is time for me to go. But I appreciate everyone. Please follow me again on Instagram. Make sure you follow me on IG. Subscribe to my channel. Watch, binge watch, 
um, you know, just hit me up, follow my story. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sticking with me, you guys. And I promise you, I am working on something major right now that will be taking a lot of my time away. So I'll most likely just start doing more live chats. Let me know if you like these live chats, then I will continue to do these in the interim until I'm able to have time to edit and, and produce and put together actual episodes. Uh, make sure you watch my latest episode where I did a review on this um, cushion. Hello. Um, and, you know, check it out. So, yes, you guys. I am here. I'm always here for you guys. I'm always here to stay. Follow me on Instagram um, to stay on top of everything. Make sure you subscribe. I love you guys. You are the absolute best in the world. All right, y'all. It's in pretty baby. Peace.